20? She might have been 20 or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, now with a, like this three-year-old, was, was it a girl? Yeah. Was it in the same dormitory room as you were? Oh, yes. Was that three-year-old treated any different than you were? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what did they use the little ones for as far as the cleaning duties? The little ones, um, they were small enough to crawl under the beds. So they had dust claws, more or less, that they pushed ahead of them under the bed and down the aisle. And they'd leave the dirt at the bottom and go back for more. But this was this was. They just story. squirmed their way under all the beds? Yeah. Where was the dining room at? Oh, let's see, that would be the north, northeast corner of the first floor. And wh what kind of table, chairs and tables did they have in there? There were several long tables. They, they, you know, they weren't folding tables or anything like that. They were tables with legs and stuff. and, and uh, Wooden chairs, as I recall, it's kind of vague in my mind. And there were, I suppose each table held maybe 12 kids. I don't remember if there were more than that or not. Was it cafeteria style? No. We were served at the table. By, uh, by the other uh, the, residents? The two, the two matrons for the boys and girls <laughs> dormitory served our food. They served each they table? They brought us a plate that was okay. already dished up. And, and did they dish it up and make the it plate and deliver? It was dished up in the kitchen and then brought in to us in the dining room. And these matrons did that? Yeah. We had one breakfast that I always remember. In fact, I think we had it the first morning I was there. I had a tin plate. And in the middle of that tin plate, they had poured syrup. Now it wasn't maple syrup, I don't remember exactly what the flavor of that was. And we had homemade bread, no butter, and milk. And we probably had an apple, it could have been an orange. But here was this plate full of syrup, and I had to watch and see what everybody else did. <laughs> First thing I see, they're breaking up the bread and sopping up the syrup. <laughs> That was kind of a shock. I'd never <laughs> had that kind of a breakfast before. <laughs> you have metal plates though, huh? Uh, I, I can't remember if we always used those tin plates or not. Mm -hmm. Now, I, it's kind of hard to believe that two, two ma the two matrons would serve 60. Yeah. Would, you, would they all be, would all 60 be eating at the same time? And uh, uh, what was on the south side of the building? Was there a club room? Where? The, uh, was there a club room? Just opposite of the dining room, that would have been on the southeast side. Mm -hmm. And uh, that club room is what we called it. I think it was called something else in a book I read recently, but it, it had the piano in it and some elaborate antique furniture. I've never seen anything like that stuff in my life. I understand it wound up on the auction block in California. It was wild. <laughs> and it, we had our parties there. Now, now, was there a radio around at the time? I know the matron had one in what we call the office. It was kind of one of the a room off to the right of the entrance. And uh, that wasn't the office, that was the matron's lounge. The office was on the left side. But they had a radio in there. But there was no, uh, there were, you girls no, and boys had no access. No, we had no radio, like in the club room. Would have been nice to have had a radio in there, but we didn't. Hmm. I guess we didn't miss it. Mm -hmm. Now the radio came to Butte in 1929, so it, it, it was out, there was radios around. Yeah, it would have been pretty new, so that would be why we didn't have it. Now, what kind of floors were in the uh, the building? The whole building was hardwood floors, beautiful floors. Mm -hmm. Now, who uh, who owned the building? Owned it? Well, I suppose it was part of the Clark Estate. I, I you know, they had a uh, what, what do you 
call it? Trustees? Mm -hmm. Now, they're, they're, what, who's Clark? Who is Clark? Who was Clark? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was W.A. or another one, but it was the father of Paul. Uh-huh. And uh, Paul had died, and this was a memorial to him. His, uh, so W.A. Clark, the Copper King, his son. I'm not sure it was his son. It might have been his nephew. Oh. But anyway, that's the, the, the building was built in his memorial. Now, when you were there, who was paying the expenses of the home? Well, this fund, this Clark had set up a fund to operate the home. Mm -hmm. They only charged a mother $10 a month to keep a child there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if she had more than one child, that was kind of a break for her because they, uh, you know, there weren't that many good jobs for women and women, women weren't. These were widows, mostly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, uh, were there orphans there? Some. Mm -hmm. And there, of course they had nobody to pay their ten dollars, but the home took care of them. Was the home considered a charity? No, that's why they had the ten dollars a month, so it wouldn't be a charitable institution. Now in the uh, club room, would you put on plays? And oh, yes. We had plays and all kinds of entertainment. We were a very talented group. <laughs> what kind of entertainment? Singing and tap dancing and acrobatic dancing. Mostly singing. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you, did you, did you girls ever play cards in the club room? No. What did you use it for, just to visit or? What did we play? What did you do in there? Well, we just kind of sat around. Somebody played the piano and we, Mm -hmm. Just lounged around. It was like the living room at home. Yeah. What was your uh, your day like? In other words, what time did your day start in the home? Well, I think they rang a bell at six o'clock, and that got us on our feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came downstairs and waited for the ring a bell for breakfast, and we filed into the dining room. Now, now, first, let's go back a moment. You were awakened at 6 with the bell, and then everybody would get dressed, right? Mm -hmm. And then would you just file down and wait in line? Yeah. And then when you'd ring a bell, then you could go in the dining room? And you waited in line outside of the dining room? Outside of the dining room. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And then? Oh, well, uh, then after breakfast, we all had our chores to do. Every month the chores were changed, and uh, like when we got up from the breakfast table, we took our dishes into the dish room, as we called it, and that was what was done there. The dishes were washed, and that was somebody's job to wash and dry the dishes. And some of the girls were on the kitchen. That meant they helped the cook with the meals. And uh, then there was... Uh, what we called bread. It was, was it called mangle and bread? Mangle and bread, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we, whoever was on bread did the mangling. That was the sheets. And uh, then, of course, there was, well, just the average cleaning that had to go on. And uh, yeah, every morning this was done with a <laughs> ritually. And what time did school start? Well, I know high school at 8.30, I think grade school was 9. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you do in the summertime? At, you know, in other words, if you didn't go to school, uh, were you just allowed to go anywhere in town? Boy, I think we, you know, we just didn't go to school. We, I, there was nothing extra, no extra work or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes on weekends, like on a Saturday usually, we'd have a picnic. Now, did you, but in the summertime, did you usually stay at the home? You mean other, rather than going away from it? Or yes. Yeah, no, we didn't go away. Maybe some of the kids did, like... We no, no, I meant during the day, did you go, oh. did you go downtown or something well, like that? we could have, yeah. Mm -hmm. We could ask permission to go. But did you spend most of your time at the home, even though you could go somewhere yeah. else? Okay. Well, heck, we all had friends around town. We could go visit our friends and 
stay for dinner, that type of thing. Was there a little hospital outside of the home? It was what we called it, the hospital. It had two big rooms, and I think each room had two beds in it. And uh, I never was move anybody to be isolated and put in there. In fact, I don't remember anybody ever being a patient while I was there. But it got cleaned every day, just as if it was in, in lots of use. Mm. Had to scrub that bathroom floor every day. <laughs> Nobody ever walked in there except the person cleaning it. <laughs> uh, was there a conservatory for with plants? Off, off of one side of the hospital, there was a, a conservatory with plants in it, kind of a glassed dome. Now, do you do you ever remember? You were there for two years, correct? Yeah. Do you ever remember any? Uh, Anybody getting in trouble with the law? Any of the no, heavens no. Any of the residents? Do you ever uh, remember being reprimanded? Not for anything serious, no. You know, sometimes we girls got up for using too much makeup or, you know, little things your mother might scold you for. And is all it would do is scold you? Mostly. Was there ever corporal punishment, physical punishment? No, no. no. And did you ever have any romances between the residents? Well, not too much. It was more like your brothers and sisters, you know. It wasn't uh, You want me to tell about the time I was yes. in the bed with some of the boys? <laughs> 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 well, that was when I first went there. <laughs> it, it never happened again. <laughs> I don't know how he managed to sneak into the girls' dorm. <laughs> It was platonic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you know how nowadays how it seems as though so many young kids are so promiscuous. Was there much of it then? Not, not much, no. It was, uh, it was one of those real hush-hush things, you know. And you, uh, there was one girl that did it was pr promiscuous, I would say, uh, the only one we knew of, and she shared all of her experiences with us. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you have to go to church on Sunday? Yep. And did Mandatory. You, and uh, where did you go to church? I went to the Christian Science Church. And that's the church on North Montana? Right. It's still there. And uh, did you ever get in trouble? No, I came close. <laughs> I decided not to go one Sunday, and I knew that the matron was always on one of the doors. There were two doors in the at the, the church. Matron, at the church, and so of course I always saw when I went in and saw when I came out. And uh, I'd say to her then, "May I go to my mother's?" <laughs> this was when I got my permission. But this particular day, I didn't go. I don't know where I went, but I didn't go to church. And that day, that night or the next day, the matron said to me, Vera, were you in church yesterday? Well, I said, yes. I went in the other door. Oh, she said, um, did you notice anything different about church that day? Well, one time before, during services, they had what they called communion, and all the people did was put their seat up and kneel down in front of it. There was nothing served for communion or anything like there is in Catholic Church. A special prayer probably or something. But I, anyhow, I said, oh, yeah, what was that? I was so surprised when they did something like that. Oh, she said, I didn't think you were there. 